thanks a lot for <coughs> coming. And uh, I just want to, I can move probably. <laughs> no, I, I, I cannot, okay. Um, so thanks a lot. I'm really excited to be here in Fashion Forward. Uh, I thought it was a big event, uh, but it went beyond my own expectations. Anyway, I, I'm just a course leader of uh, Indomus Academy and uh, it's a school in Milano where we do a post-university master in design and fashion. And uh, I'm a course leader of uh, the work of the <coughs> master in uh, fashion styling and visual merchandising. So that's why today I want to focus uh, on uh, visual merchandising and the importance of uh, window display because uh, of course it's something that started uh, like uh, more than 150 years ago but uh, it keeps uh, um, <coughs> innovating and uh, attracting uh, people. So as a first <coughs> slide I just chose uh, these uh, uh, pictures <coughs> from uh, uh, Prada Marfa. I don't know if you know, this, uh, this is not a real store. It's a piece of art uh, made by two Danish artists, Elm Gren and Dragset, that uh, um, asked uh, Mucha Prada to use the trademark uh, to do this installation in the middle of nowhere, in the desert of Marfa, uh, near, near close to uh, the city of Marfa. And it was uh, apparently a real store with window display and a real collection selected by Mucho Prada of shoes and bags. But uh, actually it's not a real store because the door is not uh, functioning. And uh, <coughs> it's just an installation and the idea of the um, two artists was to uh, let the, um, the installation gradually decay into uh, by the passing of the time. Um, of course, uh, uh, after six days, uh, some bundles destroyed and they had to rebuild again. Uh, but anyway, it was uh, the idea of the two artists was uh, uh, to attack consumerism. Uh, and uh, whether intentionally or not, uh, in, in, in a certain sense, uh, it uh, uh, helps consumerism that criticizes at the same time. So what, why I, I chose this slide? Because of the aim of a visual merchandise, of course, is attracting people uh, with a eye-catching visual display and let them in, go inside the store in order to have a shopping experience and hopefully to buy. So uh, usually in visual merchandise, since uh, 10 years, so we are working on the idea of the multisensorial store. And uh, <clears throat> there was this new word of polysensualism, that is the ability, of course, to get pleasure from the uses of all the five senses in the shopping experience. One of the, uh, an example is the, the store Abercrombie and Fitch in Milano. They used a building of Joe Ponte, a famous architect of the 1920s. And as you can see, there is a long queue uh, outside the store uh, because something is happening inside. There is a, a real shopping experience. Uh, the, it's strange because all the windows are covered, but people know that there is something going inside involving the five senses. Of course, there is a strong perfume, uh, there, are, there is a, <coughs> a loud music, and uh, there is uh, an experience that, of course, is targeted for a younger consumer, um, where you can have a sort of uh, experience with sale assistant, you can have a picture uh, with uh, some models inside, and of course, it helps uh, to communicate on social network. Another, ex another example is Victoria's Secret, uh, where, uh, as you can see, there are a lot of spaces uh, that uh, are not uh, only uh, to show merchandise, but uh, to have uh, a sort of a homely atmosphere. And it's nice because every single part of uh, the store is, uh, has got a different perfumes according to what they are going to sell. So, um, of course, uh, <coughs> 
consumers today are more educated than the past. Uh, it means that products that are not uh, aesthetically uh, displayed uh, are not suitable to be acquired. So the aim, the first aim of the visual merchandiser is uh, to uh, create a first impression that can be the window display and uh, of course uh, pushes potential customer inside the store to visit the store and uh, hopefully to sell. Uh, we assist so a gradual shift from, from verbal communication to visual interactive communication. Uh, in the past everything was done by the sale assistant. Uh, nowadays uh, I'll take an example of Prada and H&M that uh, if you are attracted by a window display of Zara and they are very good in working at this, uh, you get inside, you can easily find the product you were looking for, you can try and then you can pay without talking to any sale assistant. Uh, because everything is so clear, uh, there are a lot of signage inside the store that can help you to, uh, to make your uh, <coughs> purchase. But of course, the beginning of a window display. Uh, of course, in the 18th centuries, uh, the first thing was uh, to show um, food merchandise. Um, a fishmonger uh, put uh, his table uh, outside the store just to uh, let people understand that their food was fresh and that they were open for business. But uh, uh, the most important event was in the 1840s with the, the advent of pane of glass that uh, created the birth of department stores. Uh, the French were the first pioneer of uh, creating a department store where a lot of merchandises was <coughs> put together and they had the possibility of having this vast window space. Messier Le Busico in 1852 was the first one who created Le Bon Marché with the, the idea of having a town within a town. And I think it's uh, just the beginning. Uh, I think that in Dubai we can see uh, what's happening, uh, the biggest uh, mall in the world. That, <coughs> that was the beginning. Uh, probably this is uh, the last uh, step. Uh, but in 1909, uh, Gordon Selfridges uh, in the moved from USA to London where he opened uh, his uh, first department store. And uh, we can define uh, Gordon Selfridges as the first uh, visual merchandiser because uh, he had a lot of intuition. Uh, he thought that it was uh, a, <coughs> a waste of time not having uh, the windows display uh, light uh, on, with lights on at night. Uh, people going out from the theater could uh, stay and look at uh, the merchandise shown in the window display uh, <coughs> thanks to uh, having the light on. Uh, also, as he put a soda fountain just to help people to stay uh, outside in front of uh, the window display. Even uh, every uh, opportunities uh, uh, he could find uh, in the news uh, was uh, uh, an element to attract people to his store. So when a crash, uh, when an um, airplane crashed, he um, did everything to have the, the pieces of the aircraft in, uh, into this window. Uh, but it was also in the 20s, uh, uh, where a lot of Paris artists wanted to show their um, <coughs> piece of art, so they collaborated with fashion designers that were excited to have uh, an, a static uh, runway inside their window display. This is uh, one of the first uh, pictures of Macy's, uh, the first department stores in the USA. As you can see, how uh, the crowd looking at the Christmas uh, window display. <coughs> But also Salvatore Dali, the surrealist uh, artist, uh, collaborated uh, with uh, Bonvit and Teller, a department store in New York, to develop a window display. Uh, of course, he was an artist, and uh, there is a story that uh, he uh, 
the concept of the window was Narcissus, he created this uh, uh, strange, weird uh, window display for the time, uh, with, uh, as you can see, with uh, long arms coming outside from broken walls, but at the same time there was another one with a tub full of feather that uh, created a, a big buzz among the <coughs> um, consumers so that the director had to change the window display and when Salvatore Dalì realized that uh, uh, his piece of art uh, had been changed, he came inside the store, destroyed everything and for that reason he was put into jail. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, but also Andy Warhol collaborated uh, during uh, his uh, early period in working as a visual merchandiser in New York. Um, we have to say that in 1959, with Mary Quant, uh, that decided to showcase uh, her collection in a window display, we have uh, the, <coughs> the best idea of what we are going to uh, develop with window display. In 1990s, of course, a big brand like Gucci and Prada that invested a lot of money in advertising campaign uh, just refused to use uh, a real window display, but they uh, found that uh, it was uh, the best place to show their latest advertising campaign. So without using a mannequin, but just uh, the same billboard used for the advertising campaign for the magazine, it was in the store with a backlit panel. So, uh, of course, we have to increase sale by using, uh, by uh, <coughs> creating attractive and high-catching uh, window display in order to let consumer go inside the store uh, to help them to uh, purchase, to have a positive experience with this desire of going back to the store or I would had the desire to visit the e-commerce site. And it is what uh, it's uh, really interesting going on uh, of this omni-channel experience uh, touching the different touch point of the consumer's uh, journey. Uh, these are just uh, some data from uh, the Moscopea. It's a survey um, <coughs> company in Italy that is uh, observing uh, the um, behavior of consumers. As you can see, three people over four uh, while shopping use all the senses. Um, 58 uh, <coughs> um, use, uh, define themselves polysensorial, so using the five senses when they buy. And uh, uh, that uh, usually a consumer takes six seconds to decide if the merchandise is, is worth to take a look. While uh, I think that this six seconds can be reduced nowadays to two seconds because we are so used to look at uh, a lot of information on our smartphone that we usually take one or two seconds uh, and if we are not interested, we leave. So these uh, six or two seconds are crucial in intriguing the customer. Uh, other important, uh, interesting uh, um, data are that 72% uh, of the interviewers uh, do not like uh, crowded uh, places. 78% uh, uh, do not like the lightning and awful colors. Uh, 55 loves the soft sensation. Um, 14 loves strong sensation, 18% declared to recognize better things by touching. And this is a very good for the e-commerce site because if it's only the 18%, it means that uh, e-commerce site uh, can work very well. Uh, but of course, most of the people gives a lot of importance to smell when, when shopping. So this is a quote from uh, the creative director Weston of Selfridges that says that, of course, uh, the window display is the business card of uh, a fashion company. And uh, if uh, Selfridges were a magazine, the windows would uh, be the magazine front cover. Of course, they are installing here. 
Uh, so why we have to use window display? Uh, we have to use in window display, of course, if they are innovative and eye-catching. Uh, it's the most economic marketing tool, of course, because uh, it does not... Uh, <coughs> uh, it's better... It's, um, it saves money from investing in magazines. Um, it can happen as an advertising tool uh, because as we, can, we saw for the <coughs> big brands like Gucci and Prada, they, they use the space to advertise uh, their, um, their campaign. Uh, it uh, uh, reinforces uh, the retailer's brand image, uh, the brand identity of uh, the, the company, because usually they are located in strategic uh, places in the city, so where there is a, a very uh, <coughs> big uh, um, crowd. And uh, it, gives, uh, it gives also the possibility to look at what uh, there is inside, the merchandise inside. Um, it helps also the marketing department because if there is uh, some uh, um, merchandise that has been bought in large quantity, it can be uh, sold more easily using the window display, showing the product in the window display. I just will go very fast here. We have got different kind of window display. The closed window, of course, are the more interesting and they give uh, this effect of drama. Uh, is where the visual merchandiser can work better because it's a closed room without any contact with the interior of uh, the store. Uh, while in this case, uh, you can see through the store and uh, uh, <coughs> It's uh, called open back windows, a semi-open window where we have a panel that separates and you can see some part of the stores. But uh, uh, there are also some nice uh, new intervention of, uh, this is the Los Angeles epicenter of Prada, uh, where there is no window in this case, passerby just can walk and go inside the store without realizing that they moved from the street to, in, to the, <coughs> the store. Uh, there is, uh, of course, uh, as you can see, uh, between uh, the threshold on the store and uh, the pavement, there are holes uh, that uh, uh, function as a real uh, window display. But uh, it's also interesting uh, this case of the Balenciaga stores uh, where the architect, the retailer, uh, decided not to use uh, any windows. Uh, they were covered with shutters uh, and uh, in London and in Milano, as you can see in Milano, there are more than 10 window display. Uh, but what is nice, what is interesting uh, is that uh, uh, two months ago, they just opened two windows uh, just because they realized that it's so important to have a look on, of the merchandises that they had to open two of the ten windows. Uh, this is the angled windows, of course, that uh, it's uh, usually uh, big windows that is cut into two with a corridor that helps people to stay longer uh, in front of the windows. Showcase windows are small windows that are positioned at a high level uh, just uh, to focus on uh, small accessories and jewelry. And then we have these uh, amazing windows of uh, Coach in Tokyo, uh, where in this case uh, the walls, uh, the traditional walls between the in store and the street uh, are falling down. Uh, there is all the collection of, of bags. Uh, of course, you cannot see the last one, now on the last, you have to get inside the store to see everything. But anyway, there is no limit between the street and the store in this case. So of course, uh, the, the step in designing a window display, you have to understand, first of all, we have to understand what kind of window uh, we are using. Uh, I'm working for Montclair, for example, and they are using a different approach because they uh, start with an idea and they adapt that idea to the different size of the window display. Uh, they've got a small store in the mountains, but at the same time they've got huge stores with big uh, window display in China. 
So, but the, the idea is the same. It's reproduced, adapting and implementing some props or other elements. <coughs> This is uh, an interesting window from Selfridges uh, made by David LaChapelle in collaboration with, uh, um, for, uh, in occasion of uh, the Las Vegas anniversary. And uh, as you can see, there are all the elements typical of uh, the Las Vegas sex and neon lightings uh, and things like that. It was a window, it's the same window, of course, in different time, uh, with these inflated uh, teeth that went down, deflated slowly, and showed the uh, <coughs> double X in a, in a weak time. This is another window, of course, with neon lightings. This is RV Nichols in uh, London, where they used the theme of this uh, pipe that went inside the store, then uh, came outside of the windows, uh, creating a big uh, effect on uh, passerby, of course. And this is a, uh, a project, the workshop uh, with Lady Gaga, uh, where we are, we are going to see a video also, uh, where this, this uh, window display <coughs> is made completely of hair. Um, and the project was, of course, to uh, create a big buzz on, uh, uh, the, for the department store, um, creating different windows, but also on the last floor of the department store, there were uh, sold uh, gadgets inspired by uh, Lady Gaga's uh, uh, childhood. Uh, most 20% uh, of uh, um, the profit went to, uh, for charity. So this is uh, Lady Gaga's uh, uh, boudoir. Then uh, there was a, a car shaped uh, with the body of Lady Gaga and Lady Gaga's cave. Uh, there was also a video, interstellar video. But it was a big event uh, because uh, uh, Lady Gaga was there, of course, uh, creating a lot of buzz uh, and uh, was there to open the, the window. Probably we can start with, we can show the effect of Of course, I want to focus the attention on the fact that the thing of the window display can be promoted and developed then in the social network because everyone was looking at this on his smartphone, his or her smartphone. say we've done nothing ever on okay this we can before. stop and no, i'm not sure go to the other one yeah this was uh, the disclo the opening of uh, the window display where a lot of people were uh, waiting uh, anyway this is the last floor of barnes uh, where it was uh, completely refurnished uh, according of course it was consistent with what was uh, shown in the window display but uh, of course the <coughs> There were a lot of uh, elements uh, inspired by Lady Gaga and uh, all the gadgets. It was a tour where you could uh, buy uh, things by Lady Gaga. Okay, I think we can stop and go to the other one. That's fine. Okay, of course the budget, it's important to have a budget for window display, but it's possible to mix a expensive window display with lower budget window display. Uh, usually this is an example of Norman uh, in Copenhagen that used uh, the uh, political of changing the window display every single day. Uh, so they are investing a lot of money for this uh, reason. This is a Montclair window display, it's one of uh, the company that is investing a lot, reducing uh, uh, 
also the budget for advertising, uh, but uh, uh, developing uh, window displays that are very expensive uh, at, uh, at the same time, uh, very helpful. But of course, you can do also uh, some simple window display uh, using graphics, uh, and like that one was done for St. Valentine's Day, uh, but also for sales, you can uh, uh, use uh, plastic to wrap mannequins uh, or to use props in mass that uh, can uh, create this uh, eye catching effect. Uh, another one, uh, best, uh, good example is Louis Vuitton that is collaborating a lot with uh, artists. Uh, in this case, uh, they use the, the ostrich, and uh, the ostrich was used not, also, not only to position the mannequin, but also to hang uh, the Kelly's uh, bag uh, and the eggs of the ostrich uh, for a small window showing accessories, watches. The color is uh, extremely important for a visual merchandiser. We, have, uh, we had an experience uh, in London for the con collection of Autumn Winter 2006 where all the collection was gray. So, and uh, they didn't sell a lot. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, a visual merchandiser could have helped to sell more just putting some uh, panels uh, uh, with primary colors that are always uh, very effective. Lighting, of course, is one of the most important things. Uh, we really like also to uh, uh, create a cluster of window display according to the Greek myth of Apollo, Dioniso, Eros and the Muse, uh, just to communicate the static aspect of uh, the fashion window display. So, uh, for example, the Apollonian window is the one that uh, reveals a state of concentration, discipline, everything is essential, minimal, and has a, a mystical sense. Um, we have this video, probably from the beginning. This one was in collaboration with uh, the artist uh, Tokujino Yoshoka. This is, uh, reveals uh, the Apollonian, the state of uh, concentration and uh, simplicity. Sim <coughs> seems a simple window display, but of course it was difficult to uh, put together the movement of uh, the lady with uh, the fan that was moving. While uh, <coughs> the Dionysius uh, window display, it's always uh, the one that uh, uh, is a, uh, <coughs> a state of disorder that leads uh, to lose control and free inhibition. This is a very confused uh, uh, window display, but uh, it's uh, uh, Desigual, uh, the Spanish brand, uh, that uh, is working very well in developing uh, this uh, euphoric uh, idea of party time, uh, Ibiza and disco, and general confusion. Um, for, as far as concern, uh, the window display um, that are inspired by the muse are all those ones that are in collaboration with uh, artists. And of course, we can see here Louis Vuitton using this amazing window display. Dior, for example, Louis Vuitton again with Frank Gehry a window display. This window display was in all the store around the world during the inauguration of the foundation in Paris, Louis Vuitton, of course, built and conceived by Frank Gehry. Um, we have the last one that is Eros. Of course, here the erotic part plays a big role and the window display uh, evokes uh, erotism and passion. 
In this case, it's a Helmut Lang, but it's against the harassment for women. So it was to denounce the problem. But, and it is, for example, Desigual that is working on this kind of erotic images, sexual images. So uh, we, we also have uh, animated windows, interactive windows, uh, and uh, the use of intelligent mankins that can help the marketing department as well. Uh, this is not a simple, this is Selfridges and it's not a simple window display, but it was, uh, there were pillows uh, inflated and deflating, uh, moving uh, the, the window. Uh, Luisa Via Roma, it's a nice project. There is a, a an artistic director <coughs> uh, that is always doing uh, innovative uh, uh, window display. In this case, it was a collaboration with Alcantara, uh, an Italian firm that is producing uh, ecological fabric. So they wanted to focus the attention on uh, the softness of the um, the fabric. So the, the one on the left, on the right, was uh, the entrance where you can touch, so in, even uh, in your face, uh, the fabric. The other one was the idea of a car wash. Uh, there were these two um, big cylinders rolling down and you can go inside and touch and uh, be part of uh, this uh, experience. Of course, uh, inside there was also uh, <coughs> something connected with the window display, a product made with Alcantara. Um, this is also an interesting window display, and this is interesting because it's just connecting window display with a social network. Um, in this case, uh, uh, it's Liberty in London. They just uh, wanted to show, dif uh, <coughs> there were different windows showing different products, but not real products. It was just uh, uh, the um, hints, uh, they gave uh, only hints and clues uh, of the product. Uh, in this case, it was a scarf, so there was uh, wool and a gold uh, leaves, uh, golden um, leaves because uh, and uh, as you can see there was also a scan a QR code that uh, where you could uh, use your mobile and uh, uh, understand that it was uh, uh, a real scarf. Uh, in any case, on the window, there was also, it was also written that uh, uh, this is me, I am made of these uh, elements, so you can find me at the ground floor of uh, Liberty. Uh, there is a scarf, but there was also a, a bag uh, with the same uh, idea. Okay, as you can see, this is uh, just a focus on what was inside the window display, wool and uh, uh, golden leaves, but there was also a bag. It just, uh, in this case, uh, it helps a lot because uh, it gives the opportunity to uh, understand what is the product and if you are interested, you can go inside. Another interesting experiment was the one of from Brooks Brothers, that is the oldest company in the USA. Uh, of course, they want to focus on the key uh, iconic elements of the brand that were heritage, quality, and craftsmanship. In this case, they, used, they started using their, their trademark uh, since 1818, that is uh, the historic symbol of the wool merchants. So what they did is just they developed uh, 800 wooden um, handcrafted uh, uh, ship uh, that were assembled together to make uh, two big chandeliers. And uh, it wanted to focus the idea of uh, their uh, expertise in uh, putting together clothes. Of course, they were all um, covered with golden leaves. As you can see, this is uh, the, the window display in London. Uh, as you can see, the, the back of one window is golden leaves, the, the other one is pine stripe, the typical fabric of the company. 
but uh, it had, it was like a chandelier illuminating the, uh, the street. It was very difficult to assemble every single part in the right way, that's why. And uh, it was nice because there was also a cast bronze uh, ship um, in the street, uh, just welcoming a passerby, where you could post, you could take a pictures and post on uh, on the internet, so communicating the window on social network. Uh, it was interesting because uh, this uh, window, of course, it was very very expensive window, so it was uh, uh, <coughs> traveling uh, around the world. So. They opened in London for the Vogue's, uh, uh, <coughs> the Vogue Night Out, then they moved to Milano and uh, other three <coughs> other cities. But it was communicated very well uh, with the social network. That's uh, the main aim of uh, the window display because it can be communicated if it's innovative and uh, high-catching, of course. Um, so, um, this is why nowadays uh, traditional walls are falling apart. So eBay in 2001 uh, opened up a pub store in London. Amazon uh, created lockers to pick up uh, the merchandise that you bought online. And the Netaport set up five stores in five different uh, cities just to launch the low cost collection by Karl Lagerfeld. Another interesting uh, <coughs> thing is to connect uh, uh, the store with uh, the social network. It was by CNA, the department store, that uh, created uh, these hangers that is, are connected with Facebook so that uh, you, they register the number of likes of that garment. So that uh, in case you have some doubt, like uh, here, the ladies are having some doubt in what product to choose, uh, probably she will choose the one that has received the most like on the uh, on, uh, internet. Uh, probably it's not good for uh, the marketing because if they want to sell and push uh, some uh, product that are not uh, selling very well, uh, this is not uh, helpful. Uh, interactive windows. This is also the combination, uh, the merge between uh, physical stores and internet. This is a street style company. Yeah, you can start the more. The, it's, it's a street where there is an interaction between passerby and the users online as well. Because of course the company registered the, the registered some videos of some activists and then the users online could change the pattern of uh, the window display according to a kaleidoscope. Uh, but it's one of the most effective uh, window display everyone has been talking about uh, this. Uh, very big communication. Okay, I'm a person to launch her collection. Or she was doing a, another things like this, an interaction. Or she, the, um, she was uh, moving uh, according to people passing by. And here we should have another video. Okay, and this is also interesting because uh, this is a Dolce Gabbana. They created uh, this uh, Yeti. It was uh, more than uh, three meters tall. So it was a very expensive window display, but they communicated very well because it, even in this case, it was an eating in a rent uh, window display. They started uh, from Aspen, then they went uh, to Milano and uh, to other uh, cities. Because, and here we have this video that was communicated on Facebook, on Instagram, just uh, to uh, invite people to have a look. 
at the window display. Was a Yeti traveling from the windows of Aspen to the windows in Milano. And there were, every time it arrived in a new city, there was a, a very big communication. Windowsware is another element that connects a, a window display with uh, the social network, with the e-commerce. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, business model. They've got uh, three different business models. One is the one to connect uh, the window display. This is the window display of Fendi. And uh, uh, of course, uh, you can uh, buy the window. They have collaboration with, with top premium brands. Uh, uh, they ask uh, uh, to take pictures of the window display and, of course, uh, the possibility to, uh, buy, um, to buy the items shown in the windows. Uh, this is the Prada window display. It's the same thing. You can buy some parts, not all the looks, uh, all the outfits, uh, but uh, anyway, some parts. This is the Dolce Gabbana. The same thing. Uh, they took the pictures and uh, you can buy I said that uh, they have got uh, three different business models because one is this one of e-commerce. The other one is that they are organizing a uh, Windows tour in New York just to show people it's not, a tech, it's not uh, an aesthetic uh, uh, tour, but it's a technical uh, tour for window display where they can teach uh, uh, everyone to, uh, how to create a window display. Uh, for example, they tell that Macy's is the first uh, window display in the USA, that uh, Lord and Taylor use uh, an hydraulic, hydraulic uh, elevator to change uh, the window display so they do not have to work uh, at night, and uh, things like that. So what I would like to uh, put together is uh, that, of course, uh, nowadays, uh, retailers and uh, fashion uh, um, owner of fashion companies has to realize that they are not working anymore with two different business models. Uh, they are not working for e-commerce and uh, uh, physical store, shopping in physical store in different way, but they have to merge together uh, in a, an omnichannel approach where all the touch points the consumer finds uh, in uh, his shopping experience uh, must be consistent and coherent. Uh, it's what we say from click uh, to brick, from the click of the internet uh, to the physical store. The same experience uh, and <coughs> must be uh, unified and merged together. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, there is, uh, today there is uh, the help uh, of uh, uh, intelligent mankind. This was uh, uh, something uh, launched in Milano during a uh, Vogue Fashion Night Out uh, from Politecnico di Milano, where they uh, developed this uh, mankind that has got a sea high camera that can understand uh, how long people stay uh, behind, uh, in front of a window display if uh, they like or not uh, what was inside, if uh, uh, it might be, uh, if uh, they, ca they can recognize the nationality, the characteristic of the, co the potential consumer. And uh, also in store, uh, we have got this uh, uh, device that is uh, used uh, in most of the store nowadays, it's called Tagalo, where you can uh, um, understand uh, if some part of the stores are working or not, if there is uh, uh, people are spending quality time observing that product, if they are buying. Uh, um, and so it helps a lot the, the marketing office, of course, department. Um, okay, uh, so uh, I started with uh, uh, Prada a fake store, an installation, an artistic uh, installation. And I want to conclude with uh, Prada. This is a real store. This is uh, the uh, epicenter Prada in New York. It's part of uh, the Guggenheim Museum. 
but uh, uh, what is interesting that it, it's, it was uh, uh, open in 2001 and it came out from the collaboration of OMA, Office of Modern Ar Architecture by Rem Colas, where they started developing uh, um, a real shopping experience, different shopping experience. Rem Colas, together with Mucha Prada, would didn't want to uh, put anxiety in the consumer, so to leave uh, him, uh, her free from the pressure of buying, so that when you get inside, uh, the, um, the store is uh, characterized by this wave, there is a part of uh, the wave that can be opened and where there are <coughs> performers, there are lectures, there are concerts, uh, in order not to um, create uh, this anxiety in the buying experience so that if you want to buy something you can go downstairs where there are all the installations, uh, uh, all the collections uh, of uh, the, the, the collection. Um, okay, so this is as you can see, this is the other part of the wave uh, where people can sit and watch uh, to the performance but at the same time it's used uh, as uh, an exhibition uh, for, for Manken as well. And uh, when you go downstairs, you see this uh, hanging uh, city uh, where there are, of course, the Mankens uh, upstairs that are the focal point, uh, and then below uh, the clothes. It was, uh, um, so this is uh, 2001, and uh, Rem Colas was. Uh, the first one to understand uh, and to study the shopping uh, behavior. Uh, and th this is the first project uh, of uh, other interesting projects that he developed uh, in, uh, together with uh, Mucha Prada. Uh, they are also uh, inst creating an installation for every single fashion uh, um, catwalk by Mucha Prada. Okay, uh, probably we can see this video, the last video. Okay, anyway, where you can see the uh, experience inside the store.
Okay, so this was the first example of a human retailing experience uh, linked to technology and uh, innovation that started in 2001. We haven't seen uh, that much uh, in Milano so far, but we hope we will uh, develop this kind of uh, technology that helps a lot. <coughs> so if there is any question, yes. Uh, of the window display, uh, it dep yeah, uh, yeah, it depends. Of course, uh, it's uh, of course it's less expensive than uh, doing a, a, an advertising campaign uh, and uh, to distribute uh, the the images in all the magazines. Uh, it depends on uh, the. Pro I'm working for Montclair, for example, and they usually have a budget that corresponds to the profit of the store. So if the store uh, is making a big profit, they have a, a better budget for... Yeah. Uh, usually it's uh, about 20%. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Of the turnover of the store, of course. Yeah. But it de anyway, it depends from... Uh, different companies. Montclair is investing a lot of money in this uh, project of window display. Uh, of course, you can uh, mix uh, expensive window display with uh, low, lower budget uh, window display. But anyway, it's, uh, I think that uh, the, ma the main <coughs> aim is that nowadays you can communicate the window display, not only for the passerby that are looking at the window, but uh, thanks to the social network, uh, thanks to all these uh, um, new tools, uh, you can communicate uh, to uh, the people that you are interested also. Because for Instagram, if you post something on Instagram, you know that uh, are those people that are following you. So in that case, it works a lot, uh, I think. Uh, for, yeah, from uh, my beg the beginning of uh, my presentation, uh, if uh, window display are, wor are still working in a digital here, I would say that if we combine both, uh, they are very helpful for the business of a fashion brand. Yes. Hi, how are you? Um, okay. The question is, Basically, at the moment, you see that a lot of um, uh, people are starting to buy online, and um, there's obviously also a lot of visual merchandise that might be done online. How are, how's your view on that, and what are any tips, like, for example, of online visual merchandising? Um, because we don't just only window shop, but a lot of, of people course. even have the same store that they go on to the online shop and, and buy from there. Yeah. Is there any like things that you guys focus on um, with the brands you work with for online visual merchandising? I, I have to say that we, I'm working in Domus Academy and we usually work with brands. Uh, we do workshop uh, with real uh, projects uh, for the brands. And what is everyone asking is, uh, of course, a digital strategy. Digital strategy, it means uh, communication, uh, so visual communication. So we are working a lot and I know that uh, there are different uh, uh, new jobs uh, coming up, like uh, uh, e-stylist, uh, for example. So people that are working just for the web, uh, just to create uh, uh, amazing and interesting things uh, for the web. I have to say that everything must be connected and linked to the store because you cannot, as I said before, you cannot use two different business models uh, for the web and for the store. That's why there must always be an artistic director that is in charge of controlling uh, the image uh, at 360 degree. But of course there are um, a lot of uh, requests for people uh, uh, asking, of brand asking for uh, visual merchandise for the web uh, or stylist for the web. Okay, so if uh, <coughs> it's fine, I can close this session. Okay, thank you. <laughs>